from your official UK station for Big Blue Nation. This is BBN Tonight. Welcome to BBN Tonight. I'm Anna Tarullo. And I'm Keith Farmer. And tonight, like all nights, we'll have an insider's look into the team that you love. But we have to start on a sad note because one of our own has passed away. Former UK football coach Guy Morris died last night at the age of 71 after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2017. His family says he passed away peacefully at his family farm with his loved ones by his side. Coach Morris took over for Hal Mummy in 2001 and led the Cats to a 7-5 record in his second and final season as UK's head coach. Then he left for the head coaching job at Baylor, but at the end of his coaching career, he ended up returning to the Bluegrass, where he worked as an assistant at Lexington Christian Academy. During his younger years, Morris played 15 seasons in the NFL and was a starter on Philadelphia's 1980 Super Bowl team. That experience, coupled with his humility and dedication to his teams, made him the epitome of a player's coach. I mean, Coach Morris was a guy that done the drills with us. He was a guy that ran the conditioning tests with us. He was the guy that ran Commonwealth Stadium steps with us. Now, I mean, he wasn't finishing at the front of the pack, but there was something that made us work that much harder when we looked and we saw our head coach sweating, huffing and puffing with us. It just let us know, you know, for one, he was in tune with us. I mean, like I mentioned, just being the ultimate players coach, he knew when to push us. He knew when to give us breaks. He knew when to love on us. He knew when he could bring that hammer down because also his career sp spoke for itself. I mean, he was a guy that reached to the ultimate level with the Eagles and the Patriots. So, you know, when he spoke, you listen. And everybody's not like that. Everybody doesn't command that respect. Everybody doesn't command that that liking this as well. It's something to respect the coach, and, and that's first and foremost, but it's the, the icing on the cake is when you like your coach as well. Man, great to hear from Shane Boyd there. And Guy Morris, he wasn't the head coach of Kentucky for very long, but he was a man who loved Lexington. That's why our own former sports director, Alan Cutler, did this story when Guy and his wife, Jackie, returned to Lexington for good. Why Lexington? Why would Guy Morris and his family want to move to Lexington? He loves it here, loves it here more than any place he and Jackie have been. This is the most friendly uh, place that I've ever lived. After a 7-5 season in 2001 as Kentucky's head coach, Guy and UK Athletics Director Mitch Barnhart couldn't get together on a contract. Guy says he and Mitch are good. Today, he wants to help LCA with their air raid offense that was part of Kentucky when Guy was here. I'm particularly favorite of uh, the air raid because I was a part of the architecture of that offense. So, should be fun. There might be a lot of coaches with Guy's resume whose ego wouldn't allow them to be an assistant coach on a high school level. That's not Guy Morris. Never has been. He loves coaching. At 64, being an assistant is a lot less time and headaches than being a head coach. Guy and Jackie are looking forward to watching Kentucky play, plus he's a fan of Mark Stoops. I like what he's doing. I think he's got a good handle on the program now. Is he going into his third year? He's uh, doing everything right. I think recruiting is, is going pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they got some ways to go, but I think, you know, he's, he's a good coach. And if the, the kids respond the way I think they will for him, I think they trust you. So good to hear from Alan there again. And now we're joined by Dick Gabriel, <laughs> a.k.a. Big Blue Insider of the, of the <laughs> UK Sports Network, as well as me. All right. Dick, you had a great relationship with Coach. And you know, while he was here, you covered him and everything. It just You heard Shane Boyd talking about him being a player's coach. Dennis Johnson talked to us earlier today about the same thing. Just what did you see in him that, that made the players just run through brick walls for him? He was him? a professional yeah. in mm -hmm. every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. I mean, they know how much time he spent in the NFL. But that meant when he was dealing with us, you remember how mummy could be very charming, mm -hmm. but could be a little prickly, right? Mm -hmm. Guy Mo was a pro when it came to dealing with us. He knew we had a job to do. We knew he had a job to do. And we all got along for that reason. What are some of your favorite moments that stick out to you? Well, I think that the fact that that second year, 
they began, it began to pay off the hard work from the first year. We could see them getting better. The first season, they went only two games, but remember, they were getting better and better, had some close calls toward the end of the year. But then when they beat Louisville in that first game, that's probably, if you ask me for a high mm. point in the Guy Mo era, <laughs> brief as it was, they beat 22nd ranked Louisville on the road. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And he won over everybody in the Big Blue Nation. I love that. You spent some time in Texas. He's yep. a Texan. Yep. Uh, was it just that simple as saying he was a Texan or that uh, he was just a, from a different cloth because of the way, like Dennis Johnson said, you know, guys wanted to, the trainers wanted to get his shoes and knock off the, you know, the dirt. And he'd <laughs> be like, oh, I can do that. You know, he was just humbled. and Not just a Texan, Keith. But an offensive lineman. <laughs> you know, That's a good point. You talk about guys that put their hand in the dirt, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but he was that kind of guy, and uh, no pun intended. <laughs> but what I thought was fantastic was, and you saw Alan's story, yeah, he was a Texan, and that's one of the reasons he wanted to go coach at Baylor, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Texans like to be in Texas. Mm -hmm. yeah. but yes, they do. When it was all over, he wanted to be a Kentuckian mm -hmm. like us. Yeah. yeah, and I love that. Yeah. There, a similar thing at UGA, I know a lot of their former head coaches, they go back and live in Athens. So to have somebody come <laughs> back and live in Lexington, too, that's so special. Are you just surprised by the impact? He was only here those two short years, but obviously has made a huge impact here. Well, he was an assistant coach prior to that, but he wasn't a high-profile guy. So, yeah, people knew him best through those two years. But that's the kind of impression he made, mm -hmm. you know, through his TV show, his radio, his public appearances. And when people would see him and coach, how's it going? Which is why they asked me to do the story when they wanted to come public about the mm -hmm. fact that he had Alzheimer's mm -hmm. because yeah. they knew that folks were saying, he he's acts like he doesn't know me. What's wrong mm -hmm. with coach? Mm -hmm. And so they mm -hmm. finally went public with that. But uh, they just loved it here. Yeah. You know, I tried to reach out to several former offensive linemen that either when he was just the offensive line coach or the head coach. And I found a couple that never got back to me, and then one that was just like, I could tell he was not going to be able to talk on camera about yeah. it. That's how, how tight a relationship he had with those guys. Yeah, and the guy who was uh, Jeff Pecoro's predecessor on our radio network, Jeff Van Note, knew mm, Guy very yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Guy got the job at Kentucky, and Jeff referred to him as Guy Bob. They called him Guy Bob. <laughs> and he said he's going to be good for this program. And yeah. he was right. And were you able to interact with Guy at Fan Day when you, uh, just a few months ago? I said hello to him. I kind of grabbed his arm mm -hmm. and his eyes got big. And I, I kind of knew that he knew that I was somewhere in yeah. there. But yeah. you know how it is. It gets trapped in there of when course. you have Alzheimer's. And uh, it broke my heart uh, yeah. to see him. I was good, happy to see him. But it was sad yeah. to see him as well. Of course. Yeah. My grandmother went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I know it's a tough disease really and, tough. and hard to deal with. And so uh, we certainly send out lots of prayers to Jackie and her family as they're right. going Absolutely. through this. Dick, thanks so much. Really appreciate your Thank insight. You Look forward to having you throughout uh, the, the season. Talk a little football hopefully next time as Thank well. You. All right. We'll be right back with more BBN Tonight.